Despite Russia's claim of control over the situation in the Kursk region, Moscow fears that F-16 fighter jets might be used there, the Telegraph informs. According to the news agency, the events in the Kursk region were unexpected for the Russian command. In particular, this incursion turned out to be one of the largest land attacks on mainland Russia since Putin ordered the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. This operation was likely prepared in advance. Ukraine had moved air defense systems to the border to protect its forces. There is also concern among the Russian forces that recently acquired F-16 fighter jets might be involved in the fighting. Later, Russian President Vladimir Putin appointed Russian Deputy Prime Minister Denis Manturov as the overseer of the defense of the Kursk region. Additionally, Russian military officials reacted angrily to the Ministry of Defense's failure to secure Kursk. On August the 6th, Several media outlets began reporting that Ukrainian forces had allegedly breached the border and taken control of several settlements in the Kursk region as of August the 7th. Information about the fighting for the city of Sudza, located 9 kilometers from the border, began to spread in the media. Russia has accused Ukrainian troops of crossing the border into its Kursk region, which if confirmed marks the first incursion of its kind from Ukraine and puts pressure on Moscow in an area largely unaffected by the two-year war. The Russian Ministry of Defense, the Russian Investigative Committee and the Russian Ombudsman for Children all said Ukrainian forces had launched a massive attack attempting to break through the Russian defenses on the borders of the Kursk region, which sits just north of Ukraine's Sumy region. Russian President Vladimir Putin called the alleged incursion a large-scale provocation, saying Kyiv conducted indiscriminate shooting from various types of weapons, including missiles, at civilian buildings, residential buildings and ambulances. The extent of the attack, including whether Ukrainian troops took over any settlements or caused damage to any strategic targets, remains unclear. It is also not clear whether any Ukrainian soldiers remained on Russian territory. During the full-scale war, Russia removed from storage almost half of all armored vehicles that had been stockpiled there since the 1950s. Of what remains, more than half are in poor technical condition, according to OSINT analyst Covert Cabal, who calculated these reserves using available satellite images. Thus, as of 2021, there were 22,173 units of various armored vehicles in open areas of Russian equipment storage bases. These are different generations of tanks, infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers. According to Covert Cabal's calculations, as of 2024, these stocks have fallen dramatically to 12,504 units or by 44%. Moreover, of these 12,000 cars remaining in warehouses, about 6,800 are in poor or downright deplorable condition. According to calculations, there are no T-90 tanks left in Russian warehouses and T-64 and T-55 tanks are only in poor condition. T-62, T-72 and T-80 tanks are available in small quantities and mostly in poor condition. The situation with infantry armored vehicles looks somewhat better. There are about 1,200 BMPs in good condition 
as well as almost 1,900 armored personnel carriers of different generations. Russia has probably already passed the peak of de-mothballing infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers in storage. Most of the BMPs left in storage are rusty and empty hulls that have been there for years, and they are starting to pull even older armored vehicles out of storage that they have refused to use until now. But right now, the Russian army apparently simply has no other options, an OSINT analyst who operates on Twitter under the pseudonym Jumpy told Radio Liberty.